Last week, it was a rather slow start for She-Hulk, but this is more like it. Welcome back, MCU fans, and thank you for clicking on my spoiler review for She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Episode 2. Every single week, we are discussing all the episodes of She-Hulk, so make sure you watch the episode before this video. But once you do, I need you to start the conversation with your thoughts on it in the comments below. And this feels like the real start of the show. All the prologue is out of the way, and this is the fallout after She-Hulk has been forced to reveal herself to the world and we get some expected consequences from it but also some unexpected ones. I found it really interesting that this episode starts Jen off in such a high note where everyone loves She-Hulk, everyone loves who she is, everyone loves what she did but immediately she gets taken down to the lowest of lows where the case has to be thrown out because she acted out of order in court and also because titania apparently is a massive super influencer they are suing her they are suing her company and so she is liable for her company and they have to fire her this is all really interesting character conflict because the one thing jen dislikes about herself is the one thing that will allow her to do what she loves being a lawyer but this time it's Holloway from glknh who offers her a job the one person she was against up in court before titania came in but he wants she hulk as the lawyer this leads to a ton of inventive creative and humoristic situations that really give this show an identity of its own and i had an absolute blast watching this episode the character interactions are unique and interesting the conflict is compelling for jan walters and it broadens the scope of this show's presence within the MCU in more ways than one. But before I continue with all my spoiler thoughts on episode two of She-Hulk, I need you to start the conversation on it in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this review, if you don't want to miss any weekly She-Hulk reviews, and if you love movies and TV, this is the place to be. So consider clicking that subscribe button down there and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite MCU movies and TV. And Tatiana Maslany continues to crush this role week to week. I love how every scene is effective in displaying how comfortable or uncomfortable she feels when it comes to the power status compared to whoever she's talking to, whether it's Hollyway who exerts power over her, who her career depends on, or Bruce, who she's forcing into this conversation of, hey, I'm accepting this job, are you okay with it? I hope you are. Or even Abomination, where she's just commanding that entire situation and then sees an out for herself. In all her qualities and character flaws, I love how this show is allowing Jen to be fleshed out and for this story to tell us the lessons she has to learn so naturally without just spelling it out for an audience. It's a great character with a sharp wit that is really fun to watch, but then the story also acknowledges her flaws and what she has to accept and embrace about herself or her situation, even when not being the biggest fan of it. This is easily the best episode of the series when it comes to allowing us into the psyche of Jen Walters. We get to understand her inner conflict where she wants to do this job that she loves but has to do it with this part of herself that she's not a really big fan of. She doesn't want to be a superhero but the entire world wants her to be so. The entire world even labels her before she gets to decide her own name. So even though she has all this literal strength and power, she feels powerless in her life and in her job and it's a really fun episode in the way it deals with that where this conflict of accepting this job or not only gets more complicated her first case for glk and age requires jen to defend emil blonsky in court who claims to be rehabilitated but not only does he create a conflict of interest due to his personal history with Bruce Banner, but apparently what we saw in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings just happened and it was Wong who forced Abomination out of his cell. And this again leads to a lot of 
interesting dynamic and fun scenes to watch in the way that Jen deals with this situation where once again through the narrative we see her being cocky, being a bit smug, but we see her getting humbled. We see her learning from others. We see her being willing to listen to other perspectives and start to slowly embrace this new side of herself. That whole family dinner, man. I don't think Chad is quite as funny as the show thinks this character is, but I think the family dynamic with Jen Walters is just lovely and it actually allows for more intimate moments with this character to peel back the layers of who she is and how she's really feeling alone in dealing with this conflict which leads to that first meeting with abomination and it's just so much fun to see tim roth back where he's talking about all his seven soulmates and all his rehabilitation and how he was completely caught out of his depth when Wong came in and took him to fight in a cage. It's just really fun to see Tim Roth once more playing this character. And by the way, it all feels like a play to me. He's playing She-Hulk like a fiddle. He's playing the judges, the jury in this like fiddles easily. This dude is not rehabilitated and I cannot wait to see what happens with him. My guess right now is that Val already came in and talked him through this so he can be freed and be a part of the Thunderbolts which are coming very soon and my guess would be that She-Hulk plays a big part in that now that she is this big lawyer in the superhuman division. And I actually really love the Shang-Chi connection here. I love how strong it is because despite being fun seeing him in Shang-Chi out of context, now knowing that Wong forced him out of his cell to fight in a cage only to bring him back, it actually gives added important context to it all that fleshes out the world of the MCU, but also strengthens the connection between all these shows and movies in interesting ways. And so Jen decides to take on the case and calls Bruce only to discover yet another big tease and setup for what could be a World War Hulk movie coming to the MCU. Bruce is on the Sicarian ship on his way to Sakaar. I don't know how they're gonna do it, honestly. World War Hulk is one of my favorite comic book stories. The Hulk is my favorite Marvel Comics character, so I don't know how they're going to weave their way around stories to bring World War Hulk into the MCU, particularly when all the big events movies that we have on our way are already revealed, and I don't know where they would insert a World War Hulk within Phase 5 or even Phase 6. This is the kind of stuff that would need to be a movie, not really a series. But as for my money... If that means soon we get Monster Hulk back and we say goodbye to Smart Hulk, which I've come to like, I enjoy this version of the character, but give me my monster back. Give me the smashing, thrashing monster unleashed once more, please, Kevin Feige. This episode of She-Hulk overall displays a great balance in character development, the meta humor and style of the series contributing to the conflict resolution where it always feels earned. There's a little bit of selfishness to Jen. She wants this job because she loves to do it, because she is good at it. And once she sees that opportunity where she has to embrace this new part of herself, she's willing to do it. I like this character more and more as these episodes go by, and this to me is the first really great episode of the series. The meta humor is also on point. I love seeing Jen being caught up in this brand new world where she's out of her depth in terms of being She-Hulk, in terms of being a superhuman lawyer, in terms of dealing with all these fantastical characters, but now it needs to be who she is and she needs to embrace that part of herself and learning how to balance that with her current lifestyle. It's just really fun, it moves fast, it is the shortest episode of the series but to me it's the one that just works the most effective. It just moves, it just happens, it doesn't feel like any scene is wasted, all character choices make sense and the fleshing out of the world continues to be fantastic and just super entertaining with the meta humor being sharp and clever all around. This is a great fun episode 
of She-Hulk and really my favorite. But that's just my review of this week's She-Hulk Attorney at Law. What were your thoughts on this episode? Drop them down in the comments below. Is this your favorite episode? Did I forget to mention anything you want to talk about? Anything and everything down there. Thank you so much for watching. Big thanks to my channel members for always supporting this channel. And I'll be back very soon and next week with more She-Hulk. I hope to see you there. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.